Hi, in this video I'm going to share with you my Lightroom import workflow. Just as background I'll talk a little bit about my hardware so you understand the situation that I'm importing into. I work from a 16 inch MacBook Pro. I use it when I travel and when I come home I connect it into some monitors and external drives as a desktop replacement. So I only have one computer and Lightroom works on that when I'm traveling or when I'm at home. No photos live on the MacBook itself. They're always imported into external drives. So when I'm traveling, I have some SSD drives that I plug in, I import onto those. Once I've imported, I back up onto another SSD drive. When I come home, I connect my MacBook Pro to a dock that's connected to some external Thunderbolt RAID drives and then can move my folders that I've shot while on the road onto the hard drives at home. So the only thing that lives on my MacBook Pro is the Lightroom catalog. It uses that catalog to know where the photos exist, whether they're on the SSD drives that I have when I'm traveling or if they're on the rated Thunderbolt drives that I have at home. So for this shoot I just did locally, I'm at home, so I'm in my office and we're going to import them onto the Thunderbolt RAID drives that are the, my main storage drives for my images. You can set Lightroom up so that whenever you plug in a memory card it automatically opens the import dialog. With my Nikon Z9 it uses CF Express Type B cards which are seen as a drive rather than a memory card so you need to manually locate the drive and this brings up all the photos in the shoot I did today. They automatically are checked so if for instance I had some images on that card that I had shot previously and had imported to Lightroom I could choose select new photos and it would show the photos I've done today. It would also unfortunately select photos that I might have downloaded to Lightroom but then deleted so they were no longer in the catalogue and I'd be at risk of re-importing photos that I'd looked at and thrown away because they had issues with them. So I prefer to stick with the all photos option and that puts the photos in chronological order. If there were some old photos I could just uncheck everything, scroll through until I'd found the first photo from today and then head to the end, shift click to select all of those photos at the the most recent photos in the card and then just check those to bring them in. But because these are all unimported photos we can just say check all. It will select all of them and we'll import those. So we basically move from left to right. On the left we've chosen where the photos are coming from. In this window we've selected which of the photos we want to import into Lightroom. And now we want to tell Lightroom what we want it to do with those photos. We want to copy them as DNG files. Basically these are all Nikon RAW files. I don't want to convert them to DNG. I want them in their original form. So I want to copy them. We have the option also of moving them, which would take them from the card, copy them to the destination, and then remove them from the card. I don't like to do that because the way I see it, the images on the card are one copy. I make a new copy, so that's a backup until I delete from the card I will then have two copies of the file so I will have a backup of those images. This other option of add would be useful if the files were on a hard drive and we were going to add them to our Lightroom catalog without moving them from the drive. So for instance if I had an old folder of images on an external hard drive that I wanted now to bring into Lightroom but I didn't need to move them anywhere, I could just add them to the Lightroom catalogue at their current location. But in this situation where we've shot some images onto a card, we want to copy them onto the working drive. So we now move to the right. The Thunderbolt RAID drive that I'm working to currently is this one, and we can locate it in the destination here as well. You can see all the connected drives. There's my Mac hard drive, one of my external hard drives from when I'm out shooting, traveling. This is an old dock RAID drive that I have. This is the 8 terabyte RAID that I've used the last three years. In 2022 we're in the, the new 8 terabyte dock. So the destination it's putting them into is my birds folder Rotary Lakefront. 
and the reason this is selected is that's the last place I imported to. If for instance I had been shooting somewhere else and there were birds I could choose to put them into a subfolder. So because that name is the same it's putting it into the same place here but if for instance I'd been shooting at Tauranga it would now make a folder here showing Tauranga. We uncheck that it would just go straight into the birds folder. Because it's a destination I've been to before with Rotary Lakefront I can just choose that I don't need to put a subfolder in. It's useful to put in keywords and this is helpful for locating images after they've been imported. So these are keywords that would apply to all of these images. So for instance we could put birds, bird, put NZ, put New Zealand, Rotorua. So all of these photos will have bird or birds in New Zealand and Rotorua. Now that we've decided where they're going we need to just check and see if there are any other things we want done to those files when they move. Or copy I should say. In terms of the previews, I leave that selected to embedded and sidecar previews. These are the JPEGs that are stored with the raw file, so Lightroom doesn't waste any time building new previews. I don't need smart previews, my workflow doesn't use them. We can ask it to not import suspected duplicates, but in this situation there are no duplicates, these are all fresh file. If we wanted to, we could make a second copy to another destination, so we would back up these files. I don't see a use in that because I don't want to back things up until I know the files I want to keep. So this is just a complete capture of what I shot this today. I'm going to go through these and throw away the ones I don't want, keep the ones I want and then those are worth backing up. I don't see any point in making another copy until I've selected the ones that I want. I do rename files just as a template of date and file name so I keep the original file name but then add the date at what, on which they were shot at the beginning of it. This creates unique names so even if that file name is reused subsequently it won't look like the same file because it will have today's date attached to it. So we've chosen the pictures we want from the source we're going to copy them to the destination and this is where we want them to go precisely. This folder on this drive. We're going to rename them and we're not going to ask Lightroom to do any more in terms of previews. So we can now click import. We'll see a progress bar on the top left here and we'll see this window start to become populated by the files as they are impo imported. So you can see there are two progress bars there. One is the import and one is retrieving the embedded previews. So once the file import is completed it'll drop down to one. So this will run for a little while. The time taken depends on a number of things. The resolution of your camera, the size of your raw files, the speed of your computer, the speed of your attached drives. Once they're in this window you can actually start previewing them but I'll let this process run to completion so that you, we're not asking you to multitask and do two things at once. On this side here we can see the current import the file numbers increasing so 253 images have been imported. Right so all 253 have been imported we're now just fetching the initial previews and I'll say these are the JPEG previews that are embedded in this the RAWs. They're the JPEGs that your camera uses to create the preview on the screen. This whole process runs a little bit more quickly if I'm using an attached SSD drive. Right, we've finished, so all those pictures have been imported. We can now go through and have an initial look to see if the ones we don't want to keep. So if we want to reject something, the X key does that. And anything that's too similar or something that I'm not interested in, I'll just hit with the X key. That places this rejected flag next to it in the, in the thumbnail view. So this was just a bit of practice of a passing goal. None of those are pictures that are overly stunning and nothing I'd waste time processing. Similar issue here. So I don't really want to keep any of these. This is looking a bit more interesting with them squawking as he comes in. So we'll look at a few of those. That one's probably the nicest so we'll give it a one star rating. And we'll reject that I'll hang on to. We'll reject all the others. That one looks interesting, so we'll give it a one star. This was kind of interesting, Pukeka coming in. And there may be something interesting in this sequence, so I'll hang on to most of those at the moment. I'll 
the star ones that jump out at me is maybe being worth looking at. This is an interesting thing, Goose coming in. And it just shows the advantage of getting a nice low perspective. So the difference between that and that is all rubbish. So we can delete all of this. So X deletes, or flags as it delete. If you inadvertently flag a rejected file with the X, you can go in U for unflag it with the U button. So X flags it as rejected, U unflags it. So keyboard shortcuts are useful. So we've got to the end. We now want to select all the photos we've rejected. So if we click the reject filter, this now shows us all the photos that have been flagged with the X reject button. What I will sometimes do, and what I did intentionally in this one, is I actually left the rejected flag on one of the one stars I'd picked. So that one was one I decided to keep, but I'd already flagged it as a reject. So I always check through all my rejected to make sure that there aren't, aren't any starred images as well. So this one has a reject flag as well as a one star. So by pressing U to unflag it, it'll disappear from this filter because this filter is showing only one star and rejected. So now by removing the one star we only have rejected photo. So command all, control all on Windows, selects all of the rejected photos. Delete key brings up this dialog and asks us do we want to remove these photos from Lightroom or do we want to delete them from the disk. If we just remove from Lightroom, all it does is remove the photos from the Lightroom catalogue. So Lightroom no longer knows that, that, that these photos exist. They will be sitting on my hard drive, using up space, and Lightroom won't know they're there, and I won't know they're there. So what I want to do is delete from the disk. I want to delete them from the Lightroom catalogue. I want to delete them from the disk. they photos I don't want. So we're going to delete them from disk. That puts them into trash, and they're gone. Right, so no photos match our filter, because our filter is for rejected photos. If we uncheck rejected, these are all the photos that I took that I didn't want to throw away. If I ask for the one star images, these are the ones that I s looked at on the first pass and thought those are going to be ones that are worth spending a bit of time with. So hopefully this has been useful. Um, Lightroom is a bit of a challenge to get your head around sometimes, but it's important to remember that your photos don't live in Lightroom. They live on your hard disk and Lightroom knows where they are.